The next speaker is Stan. He loves boxing and cats. <laughs> I don't know much about boxing, but I know how cute cats are. <laughs> so, uh, the title is I quit my job to write my own language, Gobi. Plugin. 
and the uh, right side is the Gobi program that I utilize it. And the, we can, now we can call the function contained within the Go program from the Gobi program. And this is how it works internally. First, Gobi compiles the Go file with plugin demo, which generates a shared object file. Then Gobi uses the Go's plugin package to open that shared object file and get the pointer of it. Finally, the pointer is assigned to the variable P. Before the pointer is assigned to a variable, Gobi creates a plugin object to hold the plugin pointer. So the variable, variable P is, is not just a Go's pointer. It's actually a Gobi object. The Gobi's plugin object has a method name GoFunk which forwards the method call to the plugin pointer. Then you can call the plugin method from Gobi's plugin object. Next is the plugin generate method. Comparing to plugin that use, the generate method is a bit more complicated. Uh, this simple code generates a plugin named DD and to import two Go packages, which is a uh, standard SQL package, package, and the other one is PostgreSQL adapter package. The final line links a function named open with the namespace SQL. Basically, the generate method receives one argument as the plugin's name and also accept a block of its configuration. This is what would happen when Gobi generates a plugin. First, Gobi creates a file with the plugin's name, db.go, in this case, and imports Go packages according to the configuration. Then Gobi retrieves the pointer of SQL packages open function, and assign it to an exported variable, open. You can see that bar, open. The reason to do this is that when Go compiles program, it will unreference everything that has not been used or exported. After generating the Go file for the plugin, the rest is just like uh, the plugin that used. It compiles the plugin, and opens it, then gets the plugin pointer and assigns it to the variable P. So what's the purpose to use Gobi's plugin system? The plugin system allows you to use Go packages dynamic, uh, dynamically from Gobi. Now you can choose either Go packages, pure Gobi libraries, or the combinations of them to empower your Gobi program. And here is what the program would, might look like when you integrating your program with Go plugin. The topmost section is how you generate a plugin. And you just need to read those Go font method calls like the middle section does. Then you can use Go's SQL package with Ruby-like elegant syntax. But unfortunately, this feature only works for Linux for now. So users using other operating systems might need to use Docker to test it. And this is the total introduction of Gobi's plugin system. Then let's move to the next question. Uh, why did I quit my job for developing Gobi? Uh, well, it actually, it doesn't matter now. <laughs> what matters are the things I learned from writing Gobi in the past three months. I learned about how Ruby works internally, of course. And I also learned about how to write a compiler 
how to write a state-based virtual machine, and how to write a repo, and many other things. And today I want to share one of them to you, which is how compiler deal with expressions in general. But before I start, uh, let me have a short explanation about what is statement and what is expression. Firstly, a statement indicates a standalone action in a program, like this. It's a assigned statement. And expressions are the components of a statement. For example, the variable i is an expression, and 1 plus a is also an expression, which is called infix expression. And expressions can also be the components of other expressions, like 1 and the variable a are both components of the 1 plus a infix expression. For more precise definitions, here is the definition from Wikipedia about statement. And this is the definition of expression. So in short, an expression is a part of a statement and it returns a value. Uh, so uh, things like integers, strings, variables or method calls, those, those things are all expressions. And I want to start the topic with unused expressions. The word unused here it means that those expressions are redundant in a program. For example, 10 is the unused expression in this whole program. And if you write a Go program like this, you will get a compile time error, which says that 10 is evaluated but not used. And if a Ruby program contains a redundant variable i, in my case, I will see this warning message from my Vince plugin. So why do they care about those unused expressions like 10 or the variable i so much? From the experience I got from implementing OB, I think the main reason is that it might cause state overflow. But how? Let me explain this with a simple example. This is our file loop example. Very simple, it contains a redundant variable i. And this is the list of VM instructions that match to the sample code. I know it looks quite complicated, and I will show uh, how it works by a sequence of slides. And let's get started. The first part is an initial iteration of the file loop. And we will go through the rest of slides to see how we change the stack. First, we push a zero to the, on the stack. Then we pop the stack's top value, which is zero, and set it as our first local variable. Next, we jump to the instruction at line eight. The line A pushes the local variable we store before and on the stack. Then we push 10 on the stack too. And we will compare 0 and 10 by sending a less than method call. In this case, 0 is the receiver and 10 is the argument. So after the comparison, which is the method gate executed. The result won't be pushed on the top of the stack. Instead, the result will just replace the lo uh, receiver location, which is changing zero to two. And line 11 has the top value of the stack. 
and jumps to the third instruction if the result is true. So after the first iteration, you can see that the state pointer, which is SD, is at the bottom, which means that state is empty now. I would just to like to show the rest of iterations that run similarly on the using slides. But I will stop after every iteration for a while. So let's start the second iteration, which starts from line three. And this is the step after the second iteration. And we will start from line three for the third iteration as well. This is the step after the third iteration. And this is the step after the fourth iteration. And I will just stop here. As you can see on the slide, the step keeps growing growing after each iteration. But it shouldn't. This is the reason it might cause that overflow. I will explain what makes it grow. You can see three red sessions on, uh, on this slide. The first two red sessions end with set local, which will pop uh, the state's top value as the local variable. So they won't leave the extra value on the state. And the third recession uh, ends with send, which will put the result back to the receiver's location. So it won't leave any extra value on the state either. Now we know that it's the unused variable i that keeps the state growing because there's, there's no other instructions that can remove the value it pushes from the state. And how to solve this issue? Let's see how we handle this first. This program prints out the Ruby instructions for our sample loop. By running the code, you will get a list of instructions like this. And we can cut off the instructions from line 5 to line 7 because they have nothing to do with our sample. And this is the trim version. And you can see that Ruby skips a uh, get local instruction, which is the redundant variable i. Let's see our earlier instructions again. The instructions at line 3 and line 4 are both <coughs> get local. But now we only have one. So it turns out Ruby's compiler is smart enough to skip those unused expressions. But the C mean we just need to ignore everything that will leave extra value on the stack. Uh, actually, things are far more complicated than that. Let me explain this with other examples. Here is a assignment, a sign statement that works on both Gobi and Ruby. Nothing special. However, in Ruby and Gobi, we can put an assignment in uh, e if statement condition, which means the assignment needs, uh, needs to return a value now. This makes the assigned assignment 
to be an expression instead of a statement. So if we consider it an expression here, but not using its return value, the consequences will just like having an unused expression. And not just for assignment. Things like if statement, method calls, or the EO keyword, and other things also have similar issues. But, uh, uh, but we need to deal with this case in, in a different way because uh, they all have uh, side effects that need to be performed, like assign a variable or execute a method. So the compiler needs to generate different instructions depending on the context. But it, it should be hard for compilers to know if the return value should be kept or not beforehand. However, just like I said before, Ruby's compiler is smart, so it is able to generate different instructions according to the context. So how does Gobi solve this issue? Well, Gobi's compiler is not so smart, so we take a different approach. This is how Gobi handles this situation. First, when setting variables, Gobi will keep the value on the stack. It won't pop them. Second, anything that might become an expression will return a value under any condition. And we pop those return value manually if we don't need them. So let's go back to the loop example for Gobi. And these are the instructions Gobi will generate for the example. You can see that we have three more instructions. We just simply put a uh, pop instruction after the end of each statement because we are sure that they will return a value as I said before. So now the redundant variable i will have a corresponding pop instruction uh, to remove this value from the stack. But why do we have to generate more instructions, especially for those return values we don't actually need, and we even have to pop them later? This seems very stupid. Well, it's mainly because this is the easier approach. Also because it's a safer approach. Since we don't skip anything, we won't lose any instructions if something goes wrong. But I'm also trying to make Bobby's compiler as smart as Ruby's. However, it's more difficult than I thought. So I hope maybe I can find a Ruby committer to tell me mm -hmm. with this. And this is what I learned from writing Gobi and want to share with you today. I still have many things that I can share with you. So if you are in interested in writing your own language, uh, you can uh, find me uh, during the conference or the official or extra party. But before I end my talk, I want to thank Five Times Ruby for sponsoring me in this project. I also want to thank Hodge and Max for helping me prepare this talk. And thanks, thanks Stuart for designing the logo. Finally, I want to thank all the Gobi contributors. Gobi couldn't even reach version 0.1 without their help. And we are still looking for contributors. Don't be afraid if you don't know how to write Go. Most of our contributors are Ruby backgrounded and didn't know how to write Go either. So don't worry about it. And if you are interested in joining us, 
you can just find me or join our Slack. And this is the end of my talk. Thanks for your listening. I just spent 24 minutes, so <laughs> as I said before, <laughs> this is my head uh, on my Mac when I'm working. And this is the picture of one of these four legs. I think it's very cute. This is another four legs. And for some reason, he likes this position very much. He often does this. And this is him wearing the Pikachu suit. He's not very happy about this. But he still feels asleep, asleep anyway. And that's all. I think it should be... Uh, wow. He only has one minute. Okay. So, <laughs> I can start a set questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. Your cat is very cute. <laughs> is there any question? Oh, yeah. Thank you for your great talk. Hello. Yeah. I want to ask, uh, it's written in Go, right? So how many Go special language construct is available in Go? Like Go team or stuff like that? Uh, currently, all of them. All of them? We have three system based on Go routine, and we also have a channel class like based on Go's channel, but without any type of restri restriction. Okay, cool, thank you. Can we use uh, Wobbit uh, Butter Machine as uh, embed interpreter in Go program? And uh, can we call uh, Wobbit special from Go program? Uh, yes, I think we can because uh, I can open the file structure. As you can see, hey, sorry. <laughs> The code data. Uh, the VN and the compiler and the repo are both uh, all uh, Go packages. Mm -hmm. So if you write a Go program, you can just uh, import them, like the other packages. Mm -hmm. So basically, you can just use them in your in any Go program. Okay, very good. Thank you. <coughs> Is there any other question?
I think there's no no one has any question. <laughs> so can I ask a question? Uh, of course. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Go is a sophisticated language. So why? Do you combine Ruby and Go? Go is a very good language, I think. <laughs> uh, the uh, the official version is that uh, Go's community is growing, and Go this language evolves very quickly. So, if we can use both uh, Ruby source and Ghost source, it will uh, make you uh, write your program more easier, and you will have more resources. Mm -hmm. And the actual answer is <coughs> that I just like Go, <laughs> and I didn't tend to intend to make this project this big. I just initially I just want to learn how to write. Uh, rebuild a uh, Ruby in but in language like Go. Oh, thank you. And oh, oh. yeah. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, does Gobi have like uh, dynamic features like uh, adding methods dynamically or like uh, some things you can do with Ruby like that? Uh. It depends. Uh, currently, we support like uh, attribute assessor, attribute writer, and attribute reader, something like this. Yeah. But you can really dyna dynamically you uh, define method like uh, the Ruby define method. Oh, okay. method. We haven't supported that, but we still already support that uh, like the same method. Oh. And other that uh, other meta programming features is uh, still under this dis uh, dis uh, discussion uh, because in my uh, course optimization more difficult. Uh, cool. Thank you. Is there any question? So, uh, if you fa find the new question to send uh, after, uh, please ask him after this session. So, uh, is that all okay? Thank you very much.